electoral constituency too. Yadav claimed victory by a margin of 5,081 votes from his nearest contender, Shivachandra Kushwa of Janmat Party. Yadav bagged 28,415 votes to claim victory in Bara too. Kushwa finished second with 23,334 votes, while CPN UML's Purshatam Podel came in third, collecting 10,216 votes. Likewise, Ramesh Karel of Rashtriya Swatantra Party finished fourth with 2,229 votes. Speaking after the results were out in the wee hours this morning, victorious Yadav said that people desire change and traditional political parties need to take this seriously. Yadav also committed to working for the economic development of Madish province. Mainstream political parties were handed a shock result in Tano and Chitwan as the by-elections for the House of Representatives were held on Sunday this week. Nepali Congress that represented the ruling alliance in Chitwan constituency 2 and Tano 1 was defeated by Rashtriya Swatantra Party, while CPN UML could not even garner as many votes it had secured in the previous election. Tano Constituency 1 was believed to be a stronghold of Nepali Congress. However, the party lost around 6,000 votes out of the 25,000 that President Ram Chandra Porel had garnered back in November. CPN UML, that had bagged 19,000 votes in the previous election, could not cross the 8,000 mark in Sunday's by-election. Both the parties failed to make a mark in Chiton Constituency 2 as well as Rashtriya Swatantra Party Chairperson Ravi Lamichane won by a wide margin of almost 43,000 votes. Political analysts say the voters' choice clearly indicate that the public no longer trust in the old parties that are focused rather on power gains instead of addressing the public's issues. They believe the public now want an alternative to traditional parties. The ruling alliance parties at the center are making efforts to form new governments in Gandaki, Lumbini and Koshi provinces. After Gandaki province governor Prithi Man Gurung called for the formation of a new province government, Nepali Congress is making preparations to stake its claim for the post of chief minister. The governor has issued a deadline to the political parties until 4 p.m. tomorrow to stake their claims for the formation of the provincial government under Article 168, Sub-Article 2 of the Constitution of Nepal. The largest party in the province, Nepali Congress, is making preparations to stake its claim for chief minister with the support of CPN Maoist Center. Nepali Congress is preparing to make its parliamentary party leader, Surendra Pandey, the chief minister of Gandaki province. The 60-member Gandiki Provincial Assembly includes 27 members from Nepali Congress, 22 from CPN UML, 8 from CPN Mao Center, along with the Speaker, 2 from Rashtriya Prasadantra Party, and 1 independent candidate. Meanwhile, Lumini Province Governor Amik Sherchan has also called for the formation of a new province government. The Governor, governor Sherchan has given parties until 4 p.m. tomorrow to stake their claims for the formation of the provincial government under Article 168, Sub-Article 2 of the Constitution. Only Koshi province has a government led by CPN UML now. It will not be easy for CPN UML to sustain the government in the province as ruling alliance parties are doing legworks to form a new government there. We have more news coming up, but right now it's time for another short break. Shivam Cement, Bharosa, Atut Samandako.
Welcome back. With a consensus among the political parties regarding power share, Speaker Devraj Khimire has begun legworks for the formation of the parliamentary committees. The Speaker is expected to form the parliamentary hearing committee and the special committee today itself. This comes four months after the parliamentary session began. Nepali Congress, CPN Mao Center and CPN UML, among other major political parties, are to recommend the names of the members which will be followed by the formation of the committees. Nepali Congress has said that it has almost finalized the names and has claimed it will furnish the list within the deadline given by the Speaker. Another ruling alliance partner, CPN Unified Socialist, has said that the parliamentary committee leadership must be appointed with a consensus. While it is decided that the main opposition CPN UML will lead three committees, the party has yet to decide who will lead them. CPN UML is said to lead three committees, including the Public Accounts Committee, CPN Mao Center will lead two committees, and CPN Unified Socialist and Janata Samazbadi Party, one each, out of the ten parliamentary committees. Based on a consensus reached between the political parties, Nepali Congress will lead three committees, including the Parliamentary Hearing Committee. Nepali Congress has made internal preparations to lead a special committee that will be formed to endorse the bill related to transitional justice. However, the ruling alliance has yet to reach an agreement for it. Yesterday marked eight years since the massive April 2015 earthquake struck Nepal with the epicenter in Gorkha. The earthquake killed over 8,000 people and around 900,000 infrastructures sustained damages. However, despite the lapse of eight years, the reconstruction works have remained dissatisfactory. 14,000 earthquake victims have not been granted relief, while construction works of Dharara, which had been inaugurated with much enthusiasm, has yet to complete. Out of the 1,072,093 houses damaged during the earthquake, 832,000 houses had been listed as beneficiaries of the earthquake relief program. So far, 733,000 victims have been able to reconstruct their houses, while almost 100 residential houses are awaiting reconstruction. 14,000 individuals that have reconstructed their houses have yet to receive grant assistance worth more than 1.827 billion rupees. Hearing on 7,000 complaints filed against the National Reconstruction Authority for failing to include them in the list of victims have been awaited. Likewise, reconstruction of Hariyar Bhawan and Sri Mahal, which were constructed during the Rana regime, have not been settled. Reconstruction of 117 out of the 920 archaeological structures that had been damaged during the earthquake have not been completed either. The Department of Archaeology has estimated its reconstruction to complete in three years at an expense of more than two billion rupees. The department is also responsible for the reconstruction of 215 monasteries in Sindhupalchok, Rasua, and Gorkha, among other places, which was undertaken by the then National Reconstruction Authority prior to its dissolution. Reconstruction of only 25 monasteries have begun this year, but their completion is yet uncertain. Reconstruction of the 22-story Dharara has also remained stranded, while the deadline for the construction of a park in the premises that includes parking area has been extended on five different occasions. Since the 2015 April earthquake that caused damages worth 881 billion rupees, regulations were introduced for the reconstruction and construction of better structures, which have yet to be implemented. It's time now for our segment, Public Pulse, where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse, brought to you by Prabhu Bank, risen for your success. Kathmandu Euro School, Gangabu Banyatar, Kathmandu. Valley Public April 2015 earthquake not been completed even after eight years since the disaster. Your options are A, lack of sources, B, not in the priority, and C, procedural complications. The voting is on. Type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. In our public voice segment, we had asked people in several provinces regarding the role of local levels in minimizing damages caused by natural disasters. Let's take a look at what they had to say. 
पब्लिक वॉइस ब्रॉट यू बाय एन स्थानीय विस सहयोग मत भो विपत्ति को समाधान होना सकता कसर बॉमिंग किल 